Africa in full realization of the high calling and seal the office of the people's president. Rela Odinga, ODM leader, is now in the receiving end after he has decided for himself. Yes, you heard me well. This time, he has made a decision for himself as a human being. All the other times in the past, he has been making most difficult decisions for Kenyans and Kenya democracy. Rela won 2008 election. He won but was taken. So Kenyans, we have in the last two days witnessed tensions running high in our nation. Kenyans are deeply disturbed and angered by the attempt of this government to steal this election through a process that was fraudulent at the every step of the way. The people know that they voted to reject the incumbent and put in place a president and a government they will have faith in. That is why they have elected me as the president. And therefore ask that this current exercise and impasse can only be resolved through a national recount in Nairobi under the full glare of media watchfulness and the involvement of election observers. Only such a process will assure Kenyans that this was a credible election. Finally, I wish to appeal to President Mwai Kibaki to acknowledge and respect the will of the people of Kenya and honorably concede defeat. Rela won 2013 election. It was still taken. To whether the presidential election held on March 4th, 2013 was conducted in a free, fair, transparent and credible manner in compliance with the provisions of the Constitution and all relevant provisions of the law. It is the decision of the court that the said elections were indeed conducted in compliance with the Constitution and the law. Rela won 2017 election was also denied presidency position. The decision of the court is that the first respondent failed, neglected, or refused to conduct the presidential election in a manner consistent with the dictates of the Constitution and the inter alia, the election act, chapter 7 of the laws of Kenya. Number two, as to whether there were irregularities and illegalities committed in the conduct of the 2017 presidential elections, the court was satisfied that the first respondent committed irregularities and illegalities inter alia in the transmission of results, particulars and the, the substance of which will be given in the detailed and the recent judgment of the court. The court, however, found no evidence of misconduct on the, on the part of the third respondent. Number four, number three, sorry, as to whether the irregularities and the, illeg uh, and the irregularities affected the integrity of the election, the court was satisfied that they did and thereby, thereby banning the integrity of the entire presidential election. Rela won 2022 election, but still was taken. Supreme Court that time called his evidence hot air. We turn to Form 34A for Gasharaigo Primary School, which was sensationally presented by Madam Juri Soweto, advocate, to show that one Jose Kamango accessed the RTS and interfered with the result contained therein. This also turned out to be no more than hot air, and we were taken on a wild goose chase that yielded nothing of provative value. 
the Kim's kit relating to Songonyo Primary School, which bore the same serial number with another, was admitted by IMBC as an inadvertent manufacturer's error. We are also satisfied that the two kits <coughs> and other identifying features that were markedly different, including the timestamps and pulling code, and therefore nothing turns on this anomaly. Rail is almost ending to 80 years old. When he looks back, what he can see is only suffering in the hands of Kenyans. When things are not working well, when the elected government ignores citizens, Kenyans call Rayla to help them. But during election, Rayla is insulted all manner of insults. What do you expect from Rayla Odinga this time round? Refuse current day government offer? Oh no. Let him this time decide for himself for once. Let him look for African chairperson position with help of Rudo de Zakeo. Let his men who have been taking shame with him also benefits. But what about Kenya, mister? Oh yeah. Let Kenyans suffer until they realize that the elite and all Kenyans should register as voters and vote. Let them know that Kenya get leaders through voting. Let Kenyans suffer so that next time they will protect the election process as they protect their dear lives and families. Let Kenyans suffer under Ruto government so that next time they will never elect leaders with integrity issues. On our video today, we are working through the journey Rayla Odinga a stalwart of Kenyan democracy. We are looking at reason why Kenyan should not ask Rayla why he made decision to support Ruto. Before we continue, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and turn on notifications. You can also write a comment on the comment section. What is your opinion on Rayla? Now that he has decided to fully support Ruto government, despite him being aware that Ruto is not leading Kenya the right way. Now, guys, let us get deeper. What do I need? At in the Watakuja was a Kulikua technicality. At the one inch, million a kumina tano. How at a Rudia Kurasita? What a Rudia Kuramoj. Sasa we were German. At Okio Mjinga Namnagan. Julies MC Amepigua Kura. Imekuwa transmitted. <laughs> Mama County amepigiwa kura. Imekuwa transmitted. Muna mtu ameuliza swali. Mujumbe amepigiwa kura. Imekuwa transmitted. Kuna mtu amesema wameapishwa wote. Senator amepigiwa kura. Imekuwa transmitted. Kuna mtu amesema lolote. Governor amepigiwa kura. Imekuwa transmitted. Lakini kura ya rais iko na shida. Eh? Ati imekuwa transmitted. Eh, iko na shida. Transmission iko na shida. Na huyo mtu mwenyewe ndiyo ametuma majaji kila kona 47 counties ati kushuhudia kuapishwa kwa ma governor <laughs> wacha nicheke kwa sababu eh, nafikiri kwa sababu ya hizo nguo wanavaa wanaona wa Kenya wengine ni wajinga <laughs> eh? explain to me explain to me Jameni Haki wacha tuseme tu Ni wapenda amani Kwa sababu kama siyo wapenda amani Wangeona chamute makuni <laughs> eh? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Mwenye Mimi nilikuwa kwa My sister hapa Bomet Nimeona amevaa gauni mzima hapo Alikuwa na tumbo imekuwa imefika hapa Eh? E, akisimamia kusain makaratasi ya laboso <laughs> e, lakini zaza ame and I have always said we have a problem with our judiciary but regardless we respect but we shall revisit
We shall respect, but we shall revisit this agenda. Oh, yes. We shall. First and foremost, we shall address ourselves to the people of Kenya. Can you imagine? Even in America, which is supposedly the largest, the greatest democracy in the world. Wakati walishindana George Bush too. Na Al Gore. Supreme Court ya huko. Walienda wakasema, kwanza, kwanza, even before we discuss anything else. Technicality hii, hii, hii. Kwanza, we are here to respect the will of the people. Wakaenda kuhesabu mpaka walikuwa wanatoa ile, walikuwa makaratasi ile. Ati hii, hii, hii kura iko na mna gani? Ehe. Eh, to reject, to accept, to reject. Because they knew as a Supreme Court they cannot overturn the will of the people. Like any Maraga thinks he can overturn the will of the people. We shall show you in 60 days that the will of the people cannot be overturned by one or two individuals. Natu takuta na oko. Nawacha ni seme na hasira kidogo. Lakini, kwa amani, kwa amani, kwa amani. Ya? Tutarudi. Na tukisha maliza, tutarevisit hii mambo yenu. Ya? Na ndipo tunaliza kila saa, kila pahali tukienda. O, jaja mesema, tunafanya kazi hii, unakuja unablock, unaweka injunction. Kwani unafikiria wewe umechaguliwa na nani? No, 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 there's a problem. And we must fix it. Going forward, we must fix it. We must fix that problem. We must fix that problem. Lazima, turekebishi. Nandipo tuwasema si tumekueshimu wewe. Tumeagree. Mumesema 60 days. Turudi kwa uchaguzi. Jubilee. We are ready. Na tunataka IBC watangaze siku. Na sasa, kwa sababu tunasikia wenzetu, and you all, wamerudi kesi tena, sasa lazima tuwe na IBC umpia. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. We've been here before. They chased out the old, the old IBC. If they think, we don't have that time. If you have accepted all the rest of the results, let us accept the ruling. Maraga, don't interfere. And don't think that because our friends shout and we keep quiet, that we are scared of you. No, we are not. We are not. You've done your ruling, we have respected it. Let IABC do their job. Let them declare the date. And Raira, let us meet at the ballot. Sini yeah. yeah. We are not bothered with courts anymore. Courts wame maliza kazi yao. Wame sema turudi. How? Sini namna yo? Na wame sema IABC. Within 60 days. Pass. Tuagojea debe eh. Eh. Na tuataka siku itangazwe haraka. Haraka. Yeah. Kama hawa watu wanataka UN, waende wafanya UN wae agency wao, wafanya yote, sisi hatujali. Wakitaka kuita nani? Eh, maserikali ya wazungu hao wao, wakitaka kuita hiyo, wakuje wa supervise. Eh, wakuje wakue wanaitwa nini? Monitors, wanaitwa observers. Lakini kura ifanya Rela Armolo Odinga, a towering figure in Kenyan politics, has dedicated his life to the relentless pursuit of democracy and a more equitable society. His political journey, marked by triumphs and tribulations, has shaped the destiny of Kenya. Rela early life and activism. Born on January 7, 1945, into a prominent Luo family, Rela's childhood was marked by political awareness. His father, Ojinga Odinga, 
was a fervent nationalist and one of the founders of Kenya's independence movement. Inspired by his father, Rayla became politically involved at an early age. After studying engineering in East Germany, Rayla returned to Kenya and joined the University of Nairobi as a lecturer. During this period, he emerged as a vocal critic of the authoritarian regime of President Jomo Kenyatta, advocating for multi-party democracy and social justice. His activism led to his detention. Without trial in 1982, Rayla in exile and the return. Despite his imprisonment, Rayla's resolve to fight for change remained unshaken. He escaped from custody in 1991 and went into exile in Norway. From abroad, he continued to rally support for democratic reforms and fought against human rights violations. Upon his return to Kenya in 1992, Rayla joined forces with other opposition leaders to form the Forum for the Restoration of Democracy Ford. As its Secretary General, he played a pivotal role in the movement that eventually forced Kenya's successor, Daniel Aratmoa, to introduce multi-party democracy in 1992. The Kanu era and Rayla quest for the presidency. Despite the introduction of multi-party politics, Kenya's political landscape remained dominated by the ruling Kenya African National Union, KANU. Rayla became a formidable challenger to KANU, contesting for the presidency in three consecutive elections, 1997, 2002, and 2007. His campaigns, characterized by populist rhetoric and promises of economic transformation, resonated with the masses. However, allegations of electoral fraud and manipulation marred each of these elections, leading to widespread protests and political unrest. The 2007-2008 post-election crisis and Rayla decision, the contentious 2007 presidential election, which Rayla lost to the incumbent Mwai Kibaki, plunged Kenya into a deep political crisis. Alleged rigging and irregularities sparked violent ethnic clashes, resulting in hundreds of deaths and the displacement of hundreds of thousands of people. Rayla played a central role in mediating the crisis, working with other political leaders and international mediators to negotiate a power-sharing agreement between his party and Kibaki's. This agreement helped stabilize the country and prevent further violence. In all successful negotiations, there is give and take. Invariably, some supporters on each side feel that their negotiators gave too much. To those people in Kenya, I would say this, compromise was necessary for the survival of this country. Support this agreement, for it is the key to the unity of Kenya. Today we have reached an important stage in post, but the journey is far from over. In fact, it is only beginning. The real challenge now is for President Kibaki and Honorable Raila Odinga to work together to heal and reconcile this nation, working jointly to implement the reform agenda on which they agreed, they have agreed, and sustaining the effort until the job is done. But the job of national reconciliation and national reconstruction it's not for the leaders alone. It must be carried out in every neighborhood, village, hamlet of the nation. Rayla, the prime minister, and the Grand Coalition government, under the power-sharing agreement, Rayla became Kenya's first prime minister in 2008. His tenure was marked by efforts to implement constitutional reforms, address long-standing grievances, and promote economic recovery. However, the Grand Coalition government was often rocked by political infighting and disagreements between Rayla and Kibaki. The ambitious constitutional review process, intended to strengthen democratic institutions and address historical injustices, ultimately stalled. Rayla quest for democracy continuation. Despite the setbacks, Rayla's commitment to democracy and social justice remained unwavering. He once again contested the presidency in 2013 and 2017, narrowly losing to Ahuru Kenyatta both times. After the 2017 election, Rayla formed the National Super Alliance NASA coalition and challenged the results in court. 
However, the Supreme Court upheld Kenyatta's victory. Undeterred, Rayla continued to play an influential role in Kenyan politics, offering critical commentary on the government's policies and advocating for a more inclusive and equitable sociedad. He remained a beacon of hope for many Kenyans who saw him as a champion of their struggles. Rayla legacy and impact. Rayla Odinga's political career has been intertwined with the history of Kenya's democratic struggle. His unwavering commitment to multi-party democracy, human rights, and social justice has left an indelible mark on the nation. Despite enduring setbacks and controversies, Rayla's legacy is that of a tireless fighter for the rights of the voiceless and a relentless advocate for a more equitable and democratic Kenya. His contributions to the country's political and social fabric have earned him a place as one of the most influential figures in Kenya's history. As Kenya continues to navigate the complexities of democracy, Rayla's unwavering spirit and dedication to the cause of change serve as a constant reminder of the enduring power of the human struggle for a better future. We have come to an end of this video. Please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and turn on notifications. You can also write a comment on the comment section. What is your opinion on Rayla now that he has decided to fully support Ruto government despite him being aware that Ruto is not leading Kenya the right way? Thank you so much for watching up to the end. Let's meet in our next video. Good luck.